alternative education is very important in Puerto Rico because uh, we can create a curriculum based in our dreams and and goals. Mm -hmm. The curriculum in Puerto Rico was created based on the industrialization era. And now uh, we are in information one and it's very, very different. Traditional is more found in individual development and alternative is based in collective development. And I think that is a huge difference. I come from public system and definitely it was like, follow this, follow that. If you're too intelligent, you might not fit in. If you have a functional diversity or any special need, you might be discriminated. Um, not all schools, but some schools. It's too colonized what we are taught and it's, it, it can be too narrow. And in our place, they get to relearn or speak about things they had in their mind and were not recognized. And like I said, fill the gap of the need for education that they cannot pay. It's definitely important now more than ever since we, there's many, so many schools are closing. Uh, my son's school is closing actually. And definitely uh, there's a lot, uh, there has been more need and people have been asking us, hey, can you facilitate uh, in the South? Can you facilitate in Vieques? Can we make a collaboration? They've been asking like for training. People from other smaller organizations or saying, oh, we want to, even though they don't want to make an educational project, they say we want to work our meetings in a participatory way. And we want to do it the way you do it in your, in your classes um, because it's like horizontal and it seems like you fight less <laughs> or you don't fight or you get along better. That's why the committee grew up also. So, and that's why we need to make even more collaborations so that people, yes, can train themselves with us in some way and then repeat that on their places and on site and uh, I, don't, I, and I know Nuestra Escuela. Yes, in our case, we are working very hard in uh, healing stress post-traumatic mm -hmm. because many of our students lost uh, families and some families traveled to United States and some families are now broken mm -hmm and some families lost their jobs and too many, too many lost. In that way, uh, we design a, a workshop. Uh, it's a, a long-term workshop, uh, working with the healing and but, but throughout different ways, alternative ways. Mm -hmm. For example, we are working with a music therapy and yoga classes. And, and also we are uh, rethinking our model because the country changed. Mm -hmm. And if we are an alternative school that responds to the necessities of our people, we have to rethink everything. But now we are working in very intensely to support the cooperatives uh, between our graduates in order that they can really get money, enough money mm -hmm. to sustain their own lives. We don't want to reproduce capitalism. I think that for a long time, topics like economic, democratic, uh, sustainability, and social solidarity are topics for adults uh, get and it's not too open mm -hmm. to youth people. And we, in Nuestra Escuela, we assume the responsibility to socialize mm -hmm. this topic, uh, not only with youth. Uh, education in Puerto Rico looks like space where the students and kids has voice and have a, a guideline a relate to the country that we want to create. A, because now we are just learning because some, 
somebody think that is good for me to learn about that. Mm -hmm. But not necessarily is the learning that I want to get in my life and not necessarily is useful for the Puerto Rico that we want to create. And education process looks like one that respect uh, the diversity and we can talk about that in the classrooms. Uh, now is unavailable. Uh, I don't want to use prohibited mm -hmm. because I, th I think that always teachers has the, the voice to, to talk about they really want. School has to be the space where, where students really can participate and be, be prepared to the country that we really need and we really want, not the country that we have, mm -hmm. because we are not satisfied with the, with the country that, that we are living. And I think that all Puerto Ricans uh, are agree that we can do, we can have a better country and, and also that we have the capacity mm -hmm. to build it. And the school uh, has an, a, an, a very important role. And I think that we have to assume our responsibility like educators mm -hmm. and prepare the youth and the kids for the Puerto Rican that can be. We need to be able to reclaim our real history. They give us Puerto Rican history class for so many years but they just repeat the same story almost the same story and and so many people have been invisibilized and also we need to learn about the history of the antillas you know the caribbean because it's all interrelated and that gives us a strength like oh my my caribbean brothers did the same as i did let's let's get let's go let's go on <laughs> also um as Anna Iris was make reminding me not to forget we need to be we need the education to be free and accessible some people will say, oh, the school, the school system is not working anyways, close it down. And, and I'm like, no, <laughs> because if we don't, we don't even, yes, the system needs to transform, but if we mm -hmm. don't even have it, what am I going to transform? Mm -hmm. What am I going to develop? Mm -hmm. I can't because I have nothing. It's charter school or private schools, very expensive schools, actually. Uh, so where do, where do I go? And yes, that, then it goes to the, to the question of, then retaking, reclaiming um, some of these schools that are going to be abandoned, creating new curriculums and creating safe spaces and reclaiming knowledge of, of what we knew about, for example, things we knew about the land, things we knew about the plants, things we knew about the medicines, things we knew about how to cook basic things that have been taken away from us and they have just given us junk food, for example, in a place where you can grow food any time of the year. I think education also needs to be a place with, uh, with social justice in mind. And, and, and definitely, like she was saying, a training that you can actually go out and maybe build a co-op with your with your other comrades you know that would be beautiful if you went out of high school or something like that and were able already to build a co-op if we could all work together it would be more sustainable the educational project i mean that's the, like the big dream <laughs> that would be the big big dream um that we were able to think of, about education again as a community and collective effort not parents on one side or adults who are jubilees on the other side and teachers away from us is is a collaborative effort especially on kids because it, it, they say it takes a village to raise a kid mm -hmm. i learned that here <laughs> so um going back to that that that, that village thought but not repeating all gender roles mm -hmm. not repeating racism again not that just a, a new village that can make us give us freedom and yes a, a accessible and free village <laughs> because we like she says we have the resources we have the minds we have the tools uh we might even have the money but it's just it's not they're not maybe they don't give it to us maybe they will um but it's more than that um we need again our self-esteem we need again safety also we need safety to to develop these things um 
and to and to stand keep standing up against all the historical oppression that we have gone through. Ay, gracias. Mm.